This is going to be it. This is going to be it. There's no defensive play in hand. All right, well, Amnesiac. We crowned the champion. Amnesiac is about to pull this out, and he is going to take the series 3-1 if he sees it. He absolutely sees it. Slams the Grom. Grom going to get in there with the Shield Maiden, and Amnesiac is going to be the America's Winter Champion. He has punched his ticket to the Hearthstone World Championship of BlizzCon later this year. Congratulations to Amnesiac. Guys, any quick... How many of you have heard of eSports? And how many of you think that people who sit behind their desks all day playing video games are wasting their time? Hello, I'm William Barton. Before we begin, allow me to paint a picture for you, so if you would indulge me and listen. Imagine your biggest athletic achievement and the way you felt leading up to it. No doubt you were nervous, heart raising, as your instincts allowed you to compete at your highest possible capacity. You likely had friends and family there to cheer you on spurring you forward to victory. Now imagine that, but rather than hearing the support of your friends and family, hearing the steady hiss of white noise as you competed on your biggest stage ever. A few weeks ago, I attended the Hearthstone America Winter Championship. For me, it was easily the most stressful and draining experience of my life. To be put on a stage in front of 80,000 people and to be left with just your thoughts as you play against your opponent is beyond unsettling. However, as I'm sure you can all equate, the elation of watching months no years of work pay off, is also unspeakably satisfying. A few weeks ago, I became the Hearthstone America's Winter Champion, securing myself $25,000 and a direct seed to the World Championships. This cemented me as a top competitive Hearthstone player and propelled me to the pinnacle of my gaming career. Today, I want to talk about something that's really important to me. Today, I want to talk about gaming. Not just what I may think of it, but what also you all may think of it as well. For many of you, having grown up in a generation different from my own, your stereotypical gamer is the one with bags under his eyes, abysmal posture, and a diet not even one of the Rugrats could subsist on. <laughs> and for a long time, that's how gamers have been portrayed in the media, almost to the point where being gamer was taboo. I'm a professional gamer. However, that is not a complete, all-inclusive definition. I'm also a student athlete in that order and a world traveler. Gaming is a huge part of my identity, but no more than, say, my love of math, or tennis, or basketball, or even getting to see the world with my family. Some of my competitors are equally well-rounded, with one of the people I played against at the championships being the national high school chess champion, a solid tennis player, and just a generally well-rounded, nice kid. Many people see gaming as a blemish on smart young people's identities, but I would argue that it's an integral part of a holistic definition of myself. The experiences I've gotten through gaming have been like no other, and have shaped me and given me the comfort and confidence to even do a talk like this. So let's talk about gaming, first with a definition. Gaming is simply defined as the act of playing a game. So this could range from classic board games, such as Life or Monopoly, to classic card games, such as Bridge or Poker, to online games played on a computer. So while you may not know it, the vast majority of you have been gaming your whole lives. <laughs> However, when people refer to gaming nowadays, generally, they're talking about electronic gaming. If you take electronic gaming one step further, then you have eSports. eSports is basically just competition that's facilitated through an electronic device, such as an Xbox or a computer. But eSports isn't just a way of competing. It's an industry, and a rising one. In 2010, the total prize pool across all major eSports events came in at about 5.5 million USD. In 2015, that number has increased more than eightfold to over 45 million USD. As a result, established sports coverage companies such as Yahoo and ESPN are looking to get their foot in the door on eSports and are starting to carve out sections of their websites devoted to it. But who's involved in this eSports industry and who is competing in these tournaments? The answer there is primarily professional gamers. People have been gaming for a living for a long time in other parts of the world, dating as far back as the 1990s in South Korea. More recently, however, this has become more of a Western trend and spreading to Western continents such as Europe and the Americas. People who have been gaming there have been primi primarily supported by third-party teams, such as Team Archon, one of the teams I play for. But also the game developers are looking to support the competitive sides of their games more and more lately. These teams wouldn't be able to exist, however, without sponsors. And the sponsors for these teams are generally people who are providing gaming wear for professional gamers and just casual gamers. These are, they're providing things like mice, mouse pads, keyboards, and headsets. And just to name a few big companies, those would be Razer and Funk. However, due to the rise in the industry as of late, 
more generic big name brands are looking to get into the sponsor game, with Geico and Honda being a few that I've come in contact with. There are many types of professional games played. The game I play, Hearthstone, is fairly unique in that it's a digital card game, the first and by far the most prominent of its kind. It's different from a regular card game where two people are going against each other with one 52 card deck, but rather each player gets to construct their own 30 card deck of unique cards and go against each other. If I were to compare Hearthstone to a regular card game, I think the closest comparison would be poker, as both require you to evaluate what your opponent may or may not have in their hand based off their play, and then subsequently play accordingly. The main competitive format across all competitive games revolves around tournaments, both put on by the game developers and by third party organizations such as Red Bull. I had the privilege to attend one of these such tournaments in February, and I must say I was treated exceptionally well. As an experience, I would value it way more highly than the one day of school I had to miss to attend. <laughs> While there, I was extremely nervous going into our first match, but I was interviewed, and I knew I had to keep my cool during that. After the tournament, even though I did not make it particularly far, I was interviewed once again, and I knew once again that I would have to keep my cool and composure, teaching me an invaluable lesson about grace and poise, even in defeat. For me, gaming was something I grew up with. My brother Gene and I bonded over games when we were younger, and ultimately he was the one who introduced me to competitive gaming and esports. I always marveled at the sheer speed with which people can manipulate their hands while at the same time maintaining such a high octane level of critical thinking. Imagine trying to outrun a train while being pelted by minivan sized hail and trying to write and solve a math equation all at the same time. I think that's about as close a comparison as you'll get for the amount of things that are coming at you at once during some of these games. The sheer pressure of having 45,000 pairs of eyes on you as you compete for a spot in the World Championships is incomparable. The pressure I've felt at points during my gaming career completely trumps the pressure I've felt at any other point of competition in my life. Likewise, the elation of watching yourself succeed under such a high level of stress and pressure is also unlike anything I've ever felt. Then afterwards, to have to verbalize yourself in an interview in front of 38,000 people when you're still practically shaking with excitement has taught me an invaluable lesson about grace and poise in victory. Gaming for me has always meant much more than just playing. I consider myself the bit of an autodidact or a self-teacher. I've always done well in school, but at the same time felt it didn't have everything I wanted offered to me. As a result, I've been likely to branch out and try and find different ways to educate myself. This has consisted of me playing chess, bridge, and poker with my family and friends, and eventually branching into gaming. Gaming, for me, has been a great outlet for someone who takes heavy interest in learning outside of school, especially Hearthstone, as it's primarily decision-making based. I feel as though I've learned more than just how to play a specific game, but also about how to evaluate certain situations, keep my cool under pressure, even, and even how to value certain things over others in my life. I feel as though gaming gets a bad rap from a lot of generations, mostly just due to a lack of information. There have even been recent scientific strides showing that the correct games engineered by neurosurgeons may help reduce or even eliminate Alzheimer's disease. In reality, gamers aren't people who are underachieving because they're spending time gaming, but in fact, they're people who are seeing unique perspectives and thinking in different ways because they're gaming. This goes from, anyone who's someone's, from someone who's playing once a week to someone who's playing every day competitively. Bottom line, gaming is here to stay as an industry and a pastime, and it deserves your respect. So, who here has heard of esports? And who here thinks that people who sit behind their computer all day and play video games are wasting their time? Thank you.